Okay, um, welcome to this video guys on numerical integration. Okay, so numerical integration is used when uh, getting the integral of a function may be difficult or sometimes we just want a first approximation and we can use numerical methods. Okay, so let's get into it. So we're going to focus on the trapezoidal rule and the Simpsons rule. Okay, so um, again I'm not deriving these um, equations but I will just show you how to use them. So we have the integral i is equal to h over 2 times f0 plus 2 times f1 plus f2 plus as many f to the n minus 1 plus f of n. Okay, for the Simpson's rule, the equation is the integral i is equal to h over 3 times f0 plus 4 times f1 plus f3 plus f, uh, let's just do plus dot dot dot, f of n minus 1 plus 2 times f of 2 plus f of 4 plus as many f of n minus 2 plus f of n. Okay, so what do all these things mean? In both cases, we can define h, let's do it right here, h as being b minus a over n, where we have b minus a is equal to our limits of integration, and n is equal to our number of subintervals. Okay, and both of these will usually be given in the question. Okay, then let's see what these functions are telling us. F0 is the function evaluated at the start. So this is the, we can say the value, the first value, uh, or the starting value. Okay, this is the end, or the last value, and all of this is the rest of the values, which we multiply by 2. Again, we have v start, the starting value, v end, we do nothing to these values. What are these? n minus 1 values are all. The odd values are multiplied by 4, and the even values, or the even um, yeah, values are multiplied by 2. Okay. So the best way to understand what's actually happening is to carry out an example, okay? And the example we will be is evaluating, let's say, evaluate, let's say, this function 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, okay? And let's say we want n to be equal to six subintervals. So how do we do this? Okay, so the best thing to do is to define your start and end values. Okay, so your let's start with our start value. Start value is zero, end value is one. So the start value is equal to our a, and the end value is equal to our b. We know what n is n is equal to 6, so we can say that h is equal to b minus a over n, which is equal to 1 over 6. Okay, then what I like to do is to make a number line. Okay, so let's do that, and we go from 0 to 1, and we have 1 over 6, 2 over 6, 3 over 6, 4 over 6, and 5 over 6. Okay, so what we need to do now is to input, these are all our x values, okay? So we need to start getting the values of these things because we need f0, f1, f2, f3, so we can start getting that. So this is going to be our f1, uh, f0, f1, f2, f3, f4, f5, and f6, okay? So let's start with f0. So f0 is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus 0 squared, which is equal to 1. f1 is going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over 6 squared. And this value comes out as being 
equal to 0 0.9729727973 okay so um, let's continue so let's say f2 f3 f4 f5 and f6 okay again 2 over 6 this time squared okay so I'm going to continue that and what we're going to come up with is 0 0.9 for that. This we're going to come up with 0 0.8. I'm going to come up with 0 0.69230, 0 0.69230. We're going to come with 0 0.590163. I'm sorry, 9344 four. and F6. Let's just put that one plus one over one plus one squared, which is obviously equal to a half. Okay, so with um, these Casios and any real uh, AP maths calculator or scientific calculator, you can store these answers. So that's what I like to do. So I will store this as A equals that, B equals this, C equals this. D equals this, E, F, and G, or however many you need. And storing the answer just makes it easy so that you don't have to type these numbers into your calculator. Okay, so now what we can do is we can implement the trapezoid rule. Okay, so let's start with the trapezoidal rule. Okay, so the trapezoidal rule goes like this. The integral is equal to h over 2. So our h was 1 sixth. 1 sixth over 2 is 1 twelfth. Okay, and then we have the first value, which I would have stored in my calculator as a, plus 2 times b plus c plus d plus e plus f, close bracket, and the last value plus g. Okay, and the answer that we get with the trapezoidal rule is 0 0.784241. Okay, now implementing this Simpson's rule is also quite easy from here. So for Simpson's rule, what we do is we have the integral is equal to n over 3, so that is going to be 1 over 6 times 3 is 18 times the first value, which is a, plus 4 times the second value, b, plus 2 times the third value, and the pattern continues, d, b, f, and then our final value has nothing, g. And what we get is, the Simpson's rule gives a value of 0 0.78539720. Okay, cool stuff. Now, if we wanted to actually carry out the integral, the real integral value, so the actual value, oh, sorry, the actual is equal to the integral of 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is equal to pi over 4, which has a value of 0 0.7853. Nine eight. Okay, so now let's compare our answers. Okay, so with the Simpsons rule, we have about two decimal places before things start to look different. But using the trapezoid rule, we've got a significant. Uh, sorry, using the trapez uh, using the Simpsons rule is less accurate, and using the trapezoid rule, we have about two, four, five, six, even more degrees of accuracy. If we round this up, this would become an eight. In which case, we have the exact answer. Okay, so as we can see, the Simpsons rule is more accurate than the trapezoid rule. And the reason for this is we can say that the Simpsons rule has got a order uh, H2, whereas the, uh, sorry, the trapezoid rule has got OH2, and Simpsons rule has got OH4. But a catch with the Simpsons rule, it is only valid for even numbers of n, 
Okay, so if you had n is equal to, in this case, if you had n is equal to 5, this would not be possible. We could not use the Simpsons rule in this case. We would have to be using a trapezoid rule, or we can use a different method. Okay, guys, so um, yeah, so I'm happy to leave it there. Uh, I think this was a good example for you guys to try by yourself and see if you come up with the right answer. Um, thanks for watching, and in the next video, I will be covering the midpoint rule. Okay, cheers.